Hello everyone, this is part 2 of the Continuous Process Tutorial video series. In part 1, I discussed how to build a continuous process from scratch. This video, on the other hand, focuses on the convergence of recycle loops for the same process discussed in part 1. If you still don't have a copy of Super Pro Designer, make sure to download the evaluation version through our website www.intelligent.com. Let's now proceed with the tutorial. As you can see on my screen, this model represents the biomass production process that was created in part 1 of this video tutorial series. If we now bring up the waste exiting from the centrifuge, we can see that we lose some product and also notice that we have a certain amount of unreacted glucose which goes to waste. Therefore, to increase the product yield and the conversion of glucose, it's common in the chemical and commodity biochemical industries to recycle streams. Also in this case, if we recycle the stream, we can also reduce the amount of water that is required to dilute the feed. Case B represents the same process with a recycling loop added to it. In this case, another regular mixer was added to combine the recycle and the feed streams. Also notice that all the waste has been recycled back to the beginning and that the water required for dilution has been reduced. This stream used to be close to 7,000 kg per hour and now it reduced to about 1,100 kg per hour. Furthermore, the amount of product generated also increases from approximately 250 kg per hour to 278. For explanation purposes, I've added a summary in this area of the file to explain the pros and cons of adding recycle streams for this example. First, there is an increase in biomass production from 250 kg to 278, as I just showed. Secondly, the water consumption is reduced. And thirdly, we have eliminated the wastewater generation. Nevertheless, recycling also has some cons that are worth mentioning. In this particular example, the concentration of metabolites increases from 4 grams per liter to 67. Now, remember that metabolites, as I mentioned earlier, have an inhibitory effect on the biomass production. Therefore, it would be beneficial for this process if the concentration of metabolites would be reduced. A way to address this issue of reducing the metabolite concentration is by having a way of removing the metabolite itself or by removing a fraction of the stream containing the metabolite, which is the method used in this example. For this reason, KC includes a flow splitter in order to add a purge stream to reduce the amount of inhibitory metabolite. If I bring up the operations dialog, you see that the amount purged is 10%. In this case, you'll see that the amount of metabolite has decreased to approximately 27 grams per liter. As a summary, in the table below, you'll see a comparison of the three cases. The table displays the amount of biomass generated, the water consumption, and the metabolites in the broth for the base case, full recycling, and recycling with a 10% purge. Notice that if we compare the biomass production between the base case and the other two cases, we see an increase in the amount of production. Also, notice that we also have reduced the water consumption significantly from our base case to the other two cases. Lastly, the metabolites concentration in the base case was quite low, which is beneficial for this type of processes, and when we went to full recycling, it increased significantly to 67. However, by adding a 10% perch, we reduced the amount of inhibitory metabolite to 26.7. Let's now proceed to discuss recycle loops and its attributes within SuperPro Designer. Parameters that affect recycle loops can be accessed by right-clicking in the open area of the flow sheet, and then selecting the option Recycle Loop and Tear Stream Options. Through this window that appears, we can specify various things including the maximum number of iterations, flow convergence based either on component flow rate or total stream flow rate, the relative tolerance, and various other parameters. If we now check the option Show Tear Streams in Flow Sheet, and then click on the OK button, Two small red lines appear in the selected tear stream from the loop, which is this one. 
The user also has the option to select another tear stream within the loop. For example, if I right click on this stream and select the option Preferred Tear, the selected stream will become the tear stream after redoing the calculations. It's also possible to add breakpoints which help to visualize the convergence of the loops. Let's for example add a breakpoint in the centrifuge by right clicking on it and selecting the option Set Breakpoints. Through this dialog that appears, you then select Centrifuge and click OK. Notice now that the program displays the symbol of a stop sign above the selected procedure to indicate that a breakpoint exists. In order to visualize how this works, let's go ahead and disturb the loop by changing the purge amount in order to have the program perform a few iterations to converge. For this purpose, let's change the amount of the purge from 10% to 20%. If we now press Recalculate, you'll notice that several symbols appear in the flowsheet. For the calculation, the program begins with the unit that follows the tear stream and continues on until the breakpoint. Notice that a green recycle arrow symbol is displayed below the unit between the tear stream and the breakpoint. This is done in order to indicate that the program has performed calculations for those units. The blue question marks, on the other hand, indicate that no calculations have been performed. So until now, the program carried out calculations for these two unit procedures and stopped at this one. In order to continue the calculations for the other units, we can use these buttons up here, which allow us to control the loop calculations. If I now, for example, click on this button, you'll notice that the calculations have been carried out for the centrifuge and it stopped with this unit over here. I can again press the same button to move on and you'll notice that the different values are updated as we continue along the loop. By continuing clicking on this button, I can see the sequence of the calculations. Let's do the sequence again. If you continue carrying out the sequence, you'll notice that this number here goes down and this one over here starts to go up as we are purging a larger amount. Let's continue on with the calculations. Also, it's important to mention that as we carry this out, you'll see the number of iterations that are being done in the bottom right-hand corner of the program, in this area. So right now we're in iteration number three. We can then continue calculating in this way until the loop converges. However, there are other ways to speed up this process. For example, by clicking on the play button, the program will calculate for one full loop and stop at the breakpoint unit. Notice how I increase the number of iterations in this area. We can continue calculating in this way until the program converges and when it does it will display a message in the bottom right hand corner. So now the program converged after 28 iterations. Another option to speed up this process is by using the Wegstein acceleration method, which can be accessed by clicking on the empty area of the flow sheet and then selecting again the recycle loop and tear stream options. In this area, you can select the Wegstein acceleration method. Using this option allows for faster convergence. Let's go ahead and redisturb the loop by resetting the perch value to 10%. To start the calculations, we can press on the Calculate button and then use the Play button over here in order to carry out the iterations. Notice that as I continue clicking, the values of the streams also change. The loop now converges quicker, only needing 12 iterations. At this point, it's important to mention that using the Wegstein acceleration method may lead to a situation where the flow rates of the streams in the loop may oscillate between a higher value and a lower value. This oscillation is caused by the Wegstein acceleration method itself, which acts like a controller, and controllers, as we know, oftentimes cause oscillation. Therefore, if you experience oscillation, you can switch to successive substitution and that oscillation will stop. To do that, you again select the option Recycle Loop and Stair Trim Options. Here, you select the successive substitution method. Another thing that I would like to mention at this point 
is that if the loop does not converge, an error message will be displayed. Convergence is not achieved if the relative tolerance of a tear stream, which is defined as the new value minus the old divided by the old, is not obtained within the maximum number of iterations specified in this area. In general, failure of convergence is usually caused by accumulation of material in the loop. Therefore, if you have a material that is generated or enters the loop and cannot exit fast enough, accumulation of material will occur. That can be visualized by looking at the values of the flow in the streams as they will increase. A better alternative to visualize this is by generating a report for the iterations carried out. This report can be generated by selecting the Recycle Loop and Tear Stream options and then checking the Record Convergence Progress option. The resulting report will be generated in Excel format and will be located in the same folder as the Super Profile. Let's now disturb the loop one more time to generate this report. Also, let me deactivate the breakpoint in order to allow the program to carry out the iterations without stopping. When I now click on the Calculate button, the program will start the iterations and the number of iterations will be displayed in this area. The program is also a little bit slower now because it's writing the Excel report in the background. When the iterations are finished, it displays this message. To open the report afterwards, we simply open Excel and then we locate the file in the folder that it is saved. The report contains a general tab with the information of the process and also separate tab for all the different tear streams in the model. In this case, there's only one tear stream and therefore only one other tab. Here we have detailed information on the tear stream iterations. The first column displays the number of iterations that are carried out and the subsequent columns display the various parameters such as temperature, total flow and the individual components. Within each parameter, there are three columns, the guess, the calculated value, and the relative tolerance. By default, the guess starts at zero if no other data is specified. Notice that within the relative tolerance, two colors are displayed, red and blue. The blue color indicates a converged value, while the red indicates that convergence has not yet been achieved for that parameter. If we take biomass, for example, it takes three iterations before it converges. In order for the loop to converge, all individual parameters need to achieve convergence. For this example, this occurs after 28 times as the metabolites converge after 28 iterations. If you have a process that does not converge, this report will be generated up to the maximum number of iterations and some of these columns will remain red all throughout. With this report, you can then identify which individual component may be accumulating, for instance, and then go back to the process and take corrective measures. This concludes this video tutorial on the modeling of a continuous process. If you're interested in SuperPro Designer, make sure to visit our website www.intelligent.com where you can download an evaluation version of the tool or get in touch with a representative in your area that can provide you with more information. Thank you very much for your attention.